Look, this whole idea, there'll be a lot of favour from the public saying, yeah, absolutely, we should, we should crack down on this sort of thing. Any danger this could backfire? Well, it could do, potentially. You know, we don't want to go down the route of America with particularly heavy-handed policing. I think it's important that if people have got a grievance, they are able to protest and show that grievance. But I think it's that level of disruption that stops hard-working people going to work because someone's glued to the motorway or hanging off a bridge. You know, that type of disruption, I think the public want to see uh, a crackdown on, and I think that's what the Prime Minister... Yeah, the awful for. phrase, uh, red meat. This is being seen, is it not, mm. as a bit of red meat being dangled to the, to the right of the party from Rishi Sunak. But as you say, is in the front of the Guardian, absolutely uh, infuriated. Rishi Sunak saying over the weekend, the right to protest is fundamental but not absolute. So he's putting limits on it. He is, and I think this is part of a, a concerted effort by Team Rishi to make him look stronger. He's got a bit of an issue with focus groups and polling that think he looks quite weak. And we saw it on the international stage, giving more tanks to Ukraine, mm -hmm. trying to look tough. He's doing the same now on a domestic front with giving police more powers to crack down. But, yeah, I think there is a bit of a, a blurred line here where what is the right to protest and how much disruption can we allow? And how tough is he looking on strikes? I saw over the weekend that his Chancellor is being described as Iron Hunt, which sounds very tough. Be careful um, how you say that. As well, <laughs> but when it comes to the teaching strikes, um, you know, we're expecting to hear the results of a ballot today. A lot of parents will be scarred, traumatised, and indeed the children, more importantly, from what happened during lockdown. Serious concerns about children not getting into classrooms again, not least as we're heading into exam season. Yeah, I mean, the amount of disruption that, that kids and young people have been through at school over the past few years, the last thing they need now is a return to that classroom learning, that hybrid learning. It doesn't really work. But having said that, I do think teachers have got a point. You know, we do need to invest in our education system. It's an investment in the country's future. But they have to strike the balance between negotiating in a way that doesn't alienate the public and put children's educations mm. at risk. Uh, I want to ask you also about the uh, gender self-identification laws. It's a big story, this, with constitutional implications. We've seen that Scotland have now uh, decided they want to make it easier for people to self-identify as a different gender. Um, and Rishi Sunak looks, you know, he looks as though he might try and block this legislation. What would that mean? And is he right to do so? Well, it means trouble for him in Scotland. That's what it means. Why would he bother? Why would he bother getting involved? It's one of those issues that, to be honest, a lot of people don't necessarily see, aren't necessarily going to impact their daily lives. But it's a change to the cultural, societal fabric that we're all used to. And I think it's one of those issues that people do get quite emotional about. It's, a, it's a, an issue that is emotive rather than practical. And I do think he is going to potentially find himself in a few fights in... in the North, SNP are North loving border. this. The SNP are loving the fact that he's going to stand up to them on this. Well, they'll, they'll be able to say, look what evil Westminster's doing to us. That's their playbook, isn't it? Yeah. How many times have we seen Nicola Sturgeon basically just doing the opposite to what's going on in Westminster and vice versa? So it plays well for the, for the SNP to have a fight with Westminster and it plays well for the Conservatives to have a fight with the SNP mm. as well. So it's just a game of party politics, sadly. Mm. Leon, Leon, tell me, uh, as regards the strikes, are we getting any sense of a breakthrough with the rail unions now? Because we hear that uh, the government who say this has nothing to do with us, we can't get involved, have authorised uh, more money to be available on the table for this. Yeah, indeed, Eamon. I think that's what it's looking like now, that they've got to a point in negotiations where they have to do something, they have to put money where their mouth is. And, you know, this is natural in strike negotiations where they say, we can't do anything, our hands are tied, there's no money left, and eventually they stump up. But it's just the, the amounts, I think, that are going to be negotiated over. And I think we're not quite there at a resolution, but we're certainly a little bit closer. This might be the beginning of the end, though. Hopefully. And, and you know, mm. if that happens with the rail unions, then potentially the health workers will also see that there is a way to negotiate with this government, similarly with, with teaching unions, if that happens too. So let's hope this is the beginning of the end Absolutely. of the disruption.